welcome to Edison Open House Global Healthcare 2021. In this session, Instem. It's a company that has for decades now provided IT solutions for the global life sciences community. With me is their CEO, Phil Reason. Welcome, Phil. Hello, Vivian. Great to meet you. So first of all, introduce Instem for us. Um, so Instem is a uh, a software business initially for, as you say, for decades. And then uh, in recent times, just the last few years has complemented uh, its software with technology enabled outsourced services. Uh, we operate entirely within uh, the life sciences area and our solutions span from late discovery through to market launch of uh, typically regulated products. Um, we um, sort of focus in um, three areas, uh, helping people manage the complicated uh, wide spectrum of studies where they need to collect data that will be part of a regulatory submission, uh, manipulating to get data to get it into the hands of the regulatory authorities, and then the newer area, and probably the area that is um, in greatest uh, demand is uh, in silico research and development, so using large volumes of data to replace some of those laboratory and clinical uh, studies that they run uh, with um, computer modeling using large volumes of historic data. So what you do is really an absolutely vital service for companies because regulators require these large volumes of data to very precise uh, you know, in very precise ways. And actually, without somebody like you, companies really wouldn't be able to function. Uh, no, they wouldn't. Um, I mean, the genesis of the business, uh, for, for those people who are, are old enough to remember, uh, goes back to the days of thalidomide uh, and the, the consequences uh, on reproduction uh, of drugs uh, and, you know, that terribly... Uh, sad situation uh, and people had to run much much more complicated studies and they needed sophisticated IT systems to help them run those studies. Um, th that was how we started and that has continued regulation has got more stringent as people know more about the potential safety liabilities uh, with these products. Um, the data is very complicated in life sciences, the volumes of data are huge. Uh, so, yes, without sophisticated IT, it would be impossible to run today's drug development. And what about storage of that data? Because many of the regulators require the original data to be available for for decades, I, I, I suspect. Yes, they do. And actually, um, that sort of leads into one of the, the great attributes of, uh, of Instem's business, um, which is uh, how sticky our clients are once they license our solutions. Um, they might be collecting data today that is actually not going to be part of a regulatory submission uh, for two or three years. Um, and then once they've made that regulatory submission, the, uh, the company or the regulators might want to come back to that data. So once people have run our systems, collected the data in our systems, it becomes very difficult for them to turn them off uh, because that data needs to be accessible to them. Um, you know, we need to help them make um, intelligent access to that data. So, you know, this is um, uh, sort of beneficial to both us and to the client. So, you know, a hugely valuable component to the business. Sounds like a very good business model to me. <laughs> <laughs> so you've gone a bit into the in silico, you know, using really computers to look at your data, big data approaches. Yes. But you, you've you done this largely through acquiring a company. Tell me about your acquisitions. Yeah, so um, we've got two areas of business now that works in the in silico space. Uh, one that we acquired back in 2011, a UK business called BioWisdom. Um, we've uh, had a long held belief that the huge volumes of data that are collected uh, when we help clients run these studies should have predictive value. That's a different type of IT though. Um, and as great as we are at um, 
the study management, uh, we recognise we needed to bring in experts in that field, and that's what BioWisdom brought us in 2011. They have fantastic uh, big data aggregation technology, insight generation capability, uh, AI that they can apply on top of that big data. Um, and there we focused in on a particular uh, use case of those technologies that are in discovery, uh, the assessment of um, the potential safety liability of um, uh, in, intervening with a biological target, so target safety assessment. Um, that's, that's growing really well. That's one of the areas that we've ended up that um, is delivered as a service. Uh, we don't license the technology to the pharma clients to do this work. Um, we run our sophisticated technology. They give us the biological target that they want answers to. We deliver back um, a report. Uh, and then we've acquired in November 2019 a business called Leadscope in the area of predictive analytics. Um, and there we're looking at the potential toxicities, um, all sorts of different toxicities, uh, based on molecular structure and substructure. So it applies particularly to small molecules rather than large molecule interventions. Um, and that predictive analytics um, is very well established. It's been used in discovery for many years. Uh, Leadscope is one of the two leading providers of this type of technology worldwide. Um, but over recent years, um, pharma and the regulators, particularly the FDA, have been working towards authorizing these in silico studies as regulatory acceptable alternatives to laboratory tests. Um, you know, they're che cheaper, they're quicker. Um, it allows for the reduction of animal use in research. You know, loads of great reasons why these things are building huge momentum. So really excited about both those areas of in silico that give us several avenues of further growth and development in the in silico R&D space. And you had a recent fundraise. Tell me about that, because does that mean that you are going on a, a, a search for more acquisitions? Yes, we are. So um, we IPO'd in October 2010 um, to be able to access public capital, to be able to use our uh, publicly traded equity as part of transactions. Um, and with a, a sort of a message that there are a lot, it's a very, IT to life sciences is very fragmented. There are many businesses out there, many of them quite small, uh, less than $5 million in revenue. Uh, with great technology, but they don't have the global reach to be able to get these great technology solutions uh, with global adoption. Instem has invested heavily in a global uh, organization uh, with people in um, every bit of the world, really, that does appreciable amounts of, of R&D. Uh, and we can bring to these small acquisitions that platform for growth. We've done a series of smaller deals, so businesses with revenue of less than $5 million. Uh, they've been very beneficial to us. But the reality is, as we get bigger, um, to keep moving the needle with acquisitions, you even need to do more of them, or you need to see if you can find some bigger ones that are a little bit more transformational. Uh, so the fundraise of £15 million last year gives us the capital to be able to do some things that are a little bit bigger, or to do multiple smaller transactions. Um, we've been very open with um, the market to say that we uh, were close to signing an LOI with somebody to go into due diligence and raising the money would enable us to do that. We've been in that process now since July. Uh, touch wood, uh, <laughs> that will keep going successfully and we'll have a, some exciting news to announce over the next few months. Now, from what you've said, you started off as really a, a service provider, but I get the impression that you've become more of a partner to your clients than simply a service provider. Would that be true? It, it is true because clearly pharma is looking at uh, the most promising ways of uh, radically reducing the cost and time that it takes to bring uh, new products to market. Um, IT is undoubtedly one of those really strong avenues. Um, 
Instem has hundreds of clients, all of the top 25 pharma companies, most of the leading preclinical CROs who now do much of this work. Um, that trusted relationship that we've built up and our knowledge of all of this information make us an ideal partner to collaborate with as people think about what more can we do with IT to take not just weeks and months out of the R&D process, which we've been helping them do for, for decades, but how do you take years out of the R&D process? So yes, we do very much regard ourselves as a partner in that endeavor with our clients. Now, 2020 has been very difficult for many companies. How was it for your company? Um, you know, sometimes we feel slightly guilty when we look at um, how problematic it has been for, for certain industries, um, how well we performed in 2020. Um, that intersection of life sciences and IT, we found ourselves in two areas that have done tremendously well in what's been a challenging environment. Um, clients have remained very well funded. Uh, I'm sure uh, lots of the other people that you're talking to uh, for this event uh, will talk about the progress they've made and how, how funding is good. If the industry is doing well, if there's lots of drugs in the pipeline, people need more and more of our technology. Um, layered on top of that has obviously been the additional work that people have been doing to look at uh, COVID therapies, COVID vaccines. Uh, and most clients have not reduced the volume of uh, drugs going through their pipeline pre-COVID. Uh, they kept most of or all of that going as well as layering on more work. Uh, so it's made us busier than ever. Um, so uh, it's been great. Pharma looks really well funded. Um, looking forward into the future, it's hard to see uh, over the next few years that the um, the demand that's there out there for for IT uh, will not continue to increase. That's been good for us. T to be honest, it's been good for um, our competitors, uh, complementary technology vendors. You know, the rising tide has floated all boats, and that's really good with us having an acquisitive component to uh, our business. Our interest is not looking for struggling businesses that we can buy cheaply. Our look, interest is in finding businesses that can, like the many areas of Instem where we have the world leading products and services, we want to add more of those. Uh, and so being able to acquire businesses that are also doing really well uh, is ideal for us. I can't resist asking you this question because it's, it's a very important one, but we've seen how during COVID, the regulatory processes have speeded up enormously. Do you think that the regulators will be able to go back to their old ways? You know, you know there are tortuous going through the system. And what might that mean for companies like you? Um, I don't think they will be able to. Uh, you, know, the, uh, um, you know, the genie is out of the box, isn't it? And it it's hard to see how that can be pushed back in. Um, the regulators we know have, um, you know, people like the FDA have a dual role. Um, that you know, There's process and safety, but also uh, they have a responsibility to uh, facilitate bringing new therapies to market. Uh, and I think what we've seen is a shift to the regulators putting more emphasis on the importance of bringing uh, new therapies to market, particularly for unmet medical need. Um, and I think that is not going to change. And I think that is a tremendous value for people like us, where we are looking at, you know, novel applications, those in silico applications, for example. Uh, and I think it will accelerate the pace that those sorts of new technologies are adopted and approved by the regulators. Phil Reason, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure having you here. Vivian, thanks a lot. Great to speak with you.